Good day, uh, my viewers, uh, power merchants and students. Uh, today we are going to do a uh, steam plant and I uh, want to thank everyone for being patient for these videos and stuff like that. Just follow more of them. Just go pulling ananas. You'll find many of them. We're just going to do our power machines and some strength and the whole mechanical in fact the videos are coming i'm on and they are all on their way uh, okay let's get back to business today we are going to focus uh, mainly on steam plant let us uh, first find the briefing of what is steam plant and what is the purpose of steam plant by the end of this uh, chapter i would like us to understand and know that uh, know the applied thermodynamics steam plant we have to know how to do a heat balance sheet and we have to do the steam plant flow diagram so i would like to explain a uh, steam plant using the categories and figures like for an example we know that in power machine we have a turbine right we have a turbine and we know that a turbine is uh you know you're going you're going to do turbine and we're still going to post a video of of us teaching the turbine we know that in a turbine turbine got blades we know that and they are single and a fixed blade and second row uh, uh, turbines so when the turbine rotate it is generally started by a generator we can say that let me use a, a pen a generator we know that uh, the turbine generator gives like um the first motion it can be connected to a motor so that this thing is going to give the initial motion so that the turbine can rotate but uh, it is going to be expensive to use generator for the whole day for the whole week for the whole year so we simply want to find a way that how can we like the purpose of generator is to turn this tap this wheels this turbine so that the steam can be gen the electricity can be generated i mean so we will need uh a, a petrol all those fuel to turn this generator but it's going to be expensive so we designed that you know what let us make what a steam plant so this is our steam plant this is our steam plant so the purpose of steam plant is to generate the steam into the turbine so that when the generator gives the turbine an initial motion the the, the steam will continue giving the turbine a motion so i hope that you understand and let us now focus here inside uh, a steam plant we have this we are going to work with this three fig this um uh, i mean five figures first we are going to look at economizer we are going to look at economizer we are going to look at evaporator we are going to look at superheater and we are going to look at these three components. These are the main three components. But we will also look at um, air, chim air, 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 air preheater. I'm sorry for that. Air preheater. And we are also going to look at the chimney. These are the five things that we are basically going to look. But first, let us concentrate on this first tray. We know that in every plant, uh, there, will, there must be a dam or a river. Uh, or something so we are like if you can visit any place where they generate electricity they must have like a something like maybe a dam or a river let's just say a dam it can be man-made it can be a uh, natural made uh, all those kind of things but we're gonna have a dam so the purpose is this remember we say that we're concentrating on economizer evaporator and superheater right so it means here we are going to have what Let's say that we are going to have an economizer. Economizer. And here, let's give um, an evaporator. What I'm trying to do here, uh, guys, is, is, is a steam plant flow. How this flows. How the, the steam flows from one component to another. Here we're going to have an evaporator. And let's put this one here. And here we're going to say that we are having a superheater. Okay. First of all, the purpose of economizer is this. Let's start with economizer. Then I can dash it here because we are we are dealing with it now. The purpose of economizer is to reduce uh, temperature. 
and I mean is to increase the temperature. For an example, the economizer serves as a feed water, like it sucks water from the dam. So from here we're going to have what a a a a a a a a T one, which is temperature number one. This temperature is the temperature of water. Is the temperature of water from the dam. Then we know that okay, if we have T one, then T one is gonna give us what H one, which H one is what is an enthalpy. Take note that um, we are going to work with enthalpy and flue gases. But at the moment, let us focus on enthalpy, then we're going to come to flue gases. Uh, let me take my textbook and i show you something. When we are given, for an example, when we are given a temperature here of a feed water, this is the temperature of a feed water, right, into the economizer. Remember that... Uh, this water, what is heating this water? This uh, evaporation will take out a, a steam and the steam will go through superheater into the economizer. We're still going to discuss that. So when this steam passes here, it is the one that heat this water to change what temperature. So it means so after heating of this steam, we're going to have T2, which T2 is going to give us what? H2. Let us find, let us, uh, find out how are we going to get this H. Let us assume that our T1 is um, 51,4. I hope it, it is there at the back. We, then we're going to, to at the back, we're going to check a saturated temperature TS of what? 51,4. Let us look, let us look, let us look. Okay, we don't have any here. Then we come here and we check 51, okay, we have 51,1. Let's say we, we, we were given 51,1. So here you see that um, we are having 51,1 if you check here on 51,1 you look at hf because of this water from the dam it's water it's hf right so you look at hf hf is what 214 can you see it 214 can you see it good so then we see we, we, we come back and say that we come back and say that our h1 is what Two one four. So it means now we have enthalpy one, which is two one four. Same thing will apply with T two and H two. Let us assume that our T two is um. Let us assume it's one four nine comma five. We assume that our T two is one four nine comma five. How are you going to get H two? You since I showed you how to get T one. Uh, T1 and H1. You can pause the video and try to check if you can get H2 for yourself. Then if you, you can or if you cannot, you can continue with the video so we, we, we will find out what is H2. Okay, then we're going to go back to the to the uh, steam plant table and check 149, 149, comma, is it 149,5, right? There we go. Here it is. 149,5. So you look at, at what? HF, which is 630. Then you confirm that your H2 is 630. It, it, is, it, it means that now that what happened is this, what happened is this, it means that a economizer heated the temperature from 51 to 149. Even the enthalpy will do what? Will increase. I hope you get that. So now let's go to the evaporator. I can cancel it here. What is the purpose of an evaporator? Go to your kitchen, go to your stove and uh, analyze the stove. When you want to boil water, you put uh, water on, a plate, on the plate on, on top of the stove, then you pour in water inside. So you turn on the, the switch, maybe to number six, then later on you realize that okay now the water is boiling whatever the purpose that is that is done there it is evaporation so we say that okay evaporator is, is it, it, it like the, i just explained it to you in in brief that what is an evaporator so here in an evaporator we are having com many components we are having a component called a boiler Meaning that inside an evaporator we have a boiler. The purpose of boiler is to boil whatever that we want here. Remember that here we want the steam. So it means this water that we sucked from economizer will enter evaporation. And we are we will gonna need a fuel. Then it means here we're gonna have what? 
mass of fuel which we can dominate it as mf we say that it's a mass of fuel so we're gonna need fuel most commonly we know that in to, to uh, do electricity we need coal right guys we need coal so this this type of a fuel is going to be coal then we we, we can just put in uh, maybe 100 cones there whatever we need like the the, the the exact amount or we, we need uh, when you when you when you maybe you're quick you are cooking porridge you know that okay for, for for boiling water you can put your switch on number six later on when you start cooking you can reduce your your, your stove to number three whatever so that your cooking can be fine so even here we do it the same way like that and the thing that controls everything is heat value we can say that it's what heat value which means this some people can name it cv some people can name it hv it's one of the same thing so you now understand what what an evaporation is so the purpose of this the coal will burn that water that we just come in from the boiler and the steam will be generated so we know that okay the flow of steam will go straight into the superheater so in the meantime you must take note that this steam that is coming out here it's not dry so that tells us that we are going to have what dryness friction we are going to have what dryness friction which we say that if we have dryness friction we know from n5 dryness friction is x so we can find the enthalpy of this position this position like remember we said this position is going to be one this is going to be two it means this position is three so to find a uh, enthalpy on three you take this you say that h3 equals to what hf plus x hfg good so this x is going to be the dryness friction that we got here and our hf and hg we are going to get it from the pressure of the plant remember that every plant got its certain pressure for an example we are going to say that this is what pressure of plant for an example let's say that our pressure is 2000 kpa right this is our pressure of the plant so meaning that we are gonna go to our book and uh, our to our steam plant we look at the pressure of 2000 where is it there we go yes then remember from our equation we say that um let me put my things right so we can be finishing soon so uh we say that um the pressure is 2000 right so remember from my formula i said hf hf means that liquid right so you come to hf and you take 900 because your pressure is 2000 and you take 900 you substitute it here then the x maybe it is 0 0.94 you are given or maybe you found it somewhere then you substitute your x there then now you come to latent heat this thing we call it a what latent heat right meaning that inside a latent heat it's what it's 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 a inside a latent heat it's a liquid and 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 a gas at the same time so you come here it is here latent heat our f hfg then which is one one eight eight nine then you substitute it here then you can get your h3 then you are done with that one so we now confirm that we know what is evaporator works then we can come and dash out the superheater we come to superheater what is the purpose of superheater the purpose of superheater is to take this dryness steam remember that we, we say that the purpose of steam plant is to is to generate a steam so that it can rotate the turbine right so a turbine cannot be rotated by a wet steam so the purpose of superheater is to is to convert a wet steam into what a dry steam good so it means now we are having our final destination here is going to be our turbine our big beautiful turbine our big beautiful excuse my pen uh big beautiful turbine so we know that we have condition one two three we can name this one what four right so it means now this happened after the superheater then in condition four means it's a is a superheater is going to be like this all right h4 equals to what hg plus cp of su of superheater temperature of superheater minus saturated temperature meaning that 
here you're going to have what a specific heat capacity of superheater you will need this to find your h4 you're gonna need t sub to find your yeah 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 h4 so that it means that take note that when you are given like uh for an example let me make this easy for you you can find h4 in two ways let's write conditions here conditions condition number one you can get uh h4 using um h4 using pressure and temperature t sub for an example remember our pressure was 2000 and our two sub let's say is 215 then we're gonna come here we check on but the, now the table will be different we are no longer using this table because this table is not for superheater the table for superheater is here it's even 